Hey everybody, I had a question from one of our patrons, Jeremy Wagstaff, about using some of our instruments not only through just playing the sounds into Logic, but also using some of them to control Logic. So we're going to look at a little bit about that today, but keep in mind, anytime you become a patron, you're going to be able to ask these questions. We make custom videos about topics you're interested in. So definitely check out the link in the description and consider that we also do alchemy patches as a part of that. So this first example, and we've covered IDAM a number of other times, so if you're still a little bit rusty on what IDAM is, go check out uh, some of my other videos on this. The simple process though to get this all set up, first and foremost, inside the audio MIDI setup, when you have your device connected, you wanna enable it here in the list. That should also turn on the MIDI. So both of those are turned on. Let's quit out of there. And we don't have to do much else with Logic itself. We wanna use our normal interface, normal everything else. Now on my actual phone, I'm using the, the Lemur app. And in here, under settings, I am gonna just use MIDI for today. There are some scenarios where we can use OSC. But in this case, I just clicked on my MIDI targets and chose the IDAM right there. So that actually is connected now, and I have control over how this works now. So these things on the screen are going to be controlling various parameters depending on how you set it up. There's a bunch of factory presets, but you can also create your own entire interface and everything else you want with this. In this case, this is going to showcase one of the perhaps cooler things about this. I'm going to turn my friction down. I'm going to throw this ball around. And this is going to control volume. Let's turn friction all the way down so it just continues going. There we go. Turn friction back up and they'll stop. You can change the attraction level, you can change the speed, you can do a lot with this one particular bouncing ball type, bouncing XY type patch. Now, the way that we can actually use this to control things in our project, we can just use the default, which in this case happened to kind of work out to something cool, but it's not the only way we can do this. So for instance, let's throw an equalizer on here. And with an equalizer, I can then come into my smart controls. I have some unmapped parameters here. So we can actually come through. You might have to turn this section on with a little information button. But once you have that, we can map parameters right here. So here's our EQ. So say I want to do peak three frequency. And then up here we have our different peaks. So you can see it's adjusting right here. Let's move it up a little bit. Let's pull this narrower with our Q. And now this knob is gonna be moving back and forth. Now with so many things on our app here, so we have faders here. We're gonna click on learn. And I'm gonna move a fader here. So now the fader inside this app will control this, so it acts as an external controller. That's one way of making these type of assignments. So now I can easily come through and do that. It's a similar kind of thing for these. It's a little different because in some ways, if you have two or more different axis points, then you're gonna be have to really kind of configure that a little differently. But let's just see what happens. I'm gonna click Learn. I'm gonna move this. And now let's uncheck the learn. Let's move our friction around. And you can see that it's at least going in the one direction. If we wanted to, we could come through here and add a different access to an actual volume. So this thing would go in multiple directions. So this is one kind of way to use another app 
inside logic and work with it to control things. We have a keyboard here. <laughs> So you can see it as well as controlling that as a controller. Anytime we do this, let's actually push record. Just that short amount, let's go back and push play again. And so it is still triggering out. So any of the data we create on this app is going to go into our logic sequencer as well. Let's look at one other example then of this. Here we have another app. This app is called Aftertouch. And I'm just going to push down. I'm actually going to load a different sound for this because I don't want to have that same sculpture patch. Let's just do retro synth. And now with this, because of the way you have the 3D touch on the iPhone 10, so I can push on one of the squares. If I push further, it's going to do after touch. And if I drag away from this without raising my finger, it'll do a little bit of pitch bend. And so we have another really kind of unique, cool interface. This one as well, if I click on output in MIDI and scroll down, there's the IDAM MIDI host. Again, that's all I had to choose for this. And it was working just fine. Now I can change how some of these things are actually working here. So I can actually adjust how much things are being bent and everything else that goes with it and save it as a preset. So another way to control logic using a, a different interface. So pretty cool how that works. One more thing I want to do in here with Lemur. That's actually kind of cool. Let's go back into our factory presets. And let's get our iPhone drum sequencer. Here we have this. I want to come back into my settings though for a moment. We're going to slave clocks to MIDI. So we're going to turn that on. And inside Logic, we want to come through to Project Settings. And we'll do Synchronization under MIDI. And we have MIDI clock transmitting. And we want to do this to our iPhone. So this is going to send out MIDI clock. It doesn't do a ton. It does the play... Uh, the play start, stop, this mode. But it's also going to send tempo, so an overall tempo option. So now, if I come back in, and let's actually switch tracks here up to this drummer that I've got. So I'm going to come in on my phone, just throw a pattern on. And let's push play with logic. Turn off that one. So now this is actually sending tempo information from inside logic to my phone. I'm sequencing out here and it's all sunk up. So for instance, if I come in here and change my tempo down to 74, Do a little swing. But I can also come through here now and push record. You can see it kind of, it looks like it missed just like a note at the beginning there. Let's check that out real quick. Yeah, it looks like it missed one of the kicks 
or two of the kicks. And then it got stable and kept on going. So you might want to take that into consideration that it, it took a second for the clock to stabilize. And then it was solid after that. But this is an interesting way to be able to make patterns and interact. The timing information does come from within Logic and goes out to the app. Not every app accepts that type of timing information. And as you can see, it's not 100% stable and reliable. But this is a great way to be able to incorporate more sequencing and control apps outside of Logic into Logic using the IDEM interface. Okay, we're gonna do another couple of videos on this, I think, because there were some questions about this. And so we'll just look for a few more in the next couple of days. Hope you're having a great week, and I will see you soon.